everyone, Laura with Garden Answer here, and today is a really special day. And the reason is because we are here in Southern California at Oasis Water Efficient Gardens, but most especially because I am here with Cindy Davison, the founder and owner of The Succulent Perch. So Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation, Laura. Glad to be here. So you're gonna show us how to incorporate live succulents into a fresh flower arrangement, right? Correct. Okay, but before we get into the project, I wanna brag on you just a little bit. <laughs> Cindy creates the most amazing succulent arrangements I've ever seen, including her incredibly popular succulent topped birdhouses like this one. You can see all of her arrangements on her Facebook page, The Succulent Perch, or on her website, thesucculentperch.com. If you haven't seen her Facebook page or website, you really need to, so go check them out. Cindy is extremely talented and a huge inspiration to me, and she's also a huge supporter and encourager. We just started to get to know each other about six months ago or about so. That. Uh, and I have seen her come alongside tons of people in the plant world and be a cheerleader and a friend, and I really think that's rare in a person. So you can see why I'm so excited to be here. All right, Cindy, take it away. What All do we right. need for this project? Here we go. Uh, for our arrangement, what we're gonna do is start with our vase. This particular one here is a six by six inch glass base, but you can use anything that you want, as long as it's going to be holding water. Uh, the next thing we're going to use is an assortment of flowers, and you want the colors to kind of coordinate together. Uh, since this is a combination of succulents and flowers, of course we're going to need an assortment of succulents. I like to choose those that have a little bit of a rosette shape, so it kind of mimics flowers in a sense. Uh, with this one here is an Echeveria Bluebird and it actually picks up a little bit of the um, coloration in its tips uh, with the flowers that we're gonna be using. So um, I kind of chose an odd number. Things aesthetically work better that way. I like to also use a flower food. It really helps with uh, preserving the flowers. So we're gonna have a commercial uh, made floral food, a container, a measuring cup, uh, a tablespoon for the floral food. Uh, we're also going to be wiring and taping and creating false stems with our succulents so we want to use floral stem tape. What we're going to be uh, using to create our false stems for the succulents are 20 gauge floral wire that's 18 inches long. Uh, sometimes succulents <laughs> uh, need to be brushed off so a dry paint brush for that, a ruler, snippers, and pruners for our thicker greens, and I like to have a little bit of a uh, sharpener uh, close by if we need that during our project. All right, for our first step, what we wanna do is really decide where our centerpiece is gonna go, because that's going to determine the size as well as our colors. So for instance, if we're gonna do a centerpiece for our dining room table, you may wanna coordinate the colors in your flowers as well as the succulents to go with your interior decor. Mm. What I liked about this, actually this flower that we're gonna use in our centerpiece is the Alstroemeria or Peruvian Lily. And it's actually the color of Pantone 2015 Marsala. Right. And so what I did was I actually took this branch with me to the nursery here and started searching succulents that have a rosette shape that mm -hmm. kind of simulate a rose or another type of flower. And what I really liked about this Echeveria bluebird was the tips of the succulent mimics and picks up that Marsala color. So we're Beautiful. all kind of along the same mm -hmm. um, color trend here throughout our, our, our arrangement. I went ahead and chose um, this uh, single Echeveria here. We are going to use our little snippers okay. and I went ahead and sharpened them beforehand. So instead of really emptying this out totally from our container, what I'm doing is just removing some of this soil. And I tend to really like to use um, succulents which um, are dry uh, with mm -hmm. the surrounding soil mm -hmm. only because wet soil really sticks sure. to each, each other. And, right. uh, onto you and everything else. That was clean. So as you um, have then went ahead and uh, removed some of this soil from the um, center of the Echeveria, you'll see a bit of a stem there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my snippers and remove the roots and the um, succulent from the soil because mm -hmm. we don't need that. Now, sometimes you'll kind of feel a little residue just from the dry soil and I use a dry paintbrush and try to remove a lot of that because we will be using a floral stem tape in which there is a couple of um, parameters for that to work and one of them is having a very dry and clean uh, surface that you're gonna work on. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is using our 20 gauge 
18 inch floral wire. The thing to remember is when you are um, inserting your wire, you want to hold it close to the um, end that is actually going to be inserted into the succulent stem. And you don't want to have your finger close to, you know where I'm going with this. Because <laughs> you don't want to poke yourself because you will bleed. I know, I've done it more than once. I'm experienced. So go ahead, and I'm kind of in the um, center of my stem. Okay. You can kind of watch how I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going straight through. Sometimes you might go ahead and hit that leaf, so if you just bend it a little bit, um, and then pull it all the way through to the center. Okay. You can kind of see the difference in diameter of our succulents, even though they're the same type, but they're plants, mm -hmm. and they're not you know, from a mold. With yours, um, it's going to be really tough to put another wire through it. I like to have two wires just for stability, sure. but I can do it with mine, but I'm gonna show you a little trick. Okay, awesome. So what I'm gonna do is just go perpendicular to my first insertion. I'm going right below it, and again, I'm feeding it through. So basically you have like a plus sign with your um, succulent through the center. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine down and then if I can show you yes. then, Laura, how you can still add stability, because it's a rather large head. Right, it's got um, some weight to it. So it does. So what we're going to do is just go right into the succulent. Oh. Right into the base there. So right into the base here, we didn't go through the stem, and I want to look through the top to make sure we didn't come out the other end, okay? So I maybe went in a quarter of an inch okay. of that, but I can feel, and you can feel too, that I, you can it's hang it sure. on that. So then, our next step, what we're going to do is we're going to basically fold down our legs. The next thing we're going to do is use our floral stem tape. Um, we're not going to take it off of the uh, roll, but we're gonna give ourselves something to work with here. Again, in using uh, the floral stem tape, you want to have a dry surface and you want it to be fairly clean. Okay. Um, a little bit of a trick for this, we always wanna cover our mechanics, mm -hmm. kind of the first thing you're gonna learn if you ever went to floral school. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking this edge of the tape and I'm pretty much right underneath the um, last row of the leaves for the succulent okay. and I'm kind of just holding it right over where the wires are. Mm -hmm. I'm wrapping it around as I'm turning the succulent. Now the key to this is to get the tape, which is actually a little sticky, but to kind of um, get that going, mm -hmm. you want to pull the tape a little bit. Oh. If you pull too hard, It'll break, okay. but that's okay because you can go back and add more tape. Sure. And you're twisting. So me being right-handed, I'm going to twist with my left hand. I'm kind of overlapping the tape. While pulling it a little while bit. While pulling okay. it a little bit. And then with my thumb and my forefinger, I'm compressing it down on itself. Uh -huh. I've kind of got all the wires bunched together. I get to the point where I've got my stem wrapped, as you do too. Okay. And then I'm going to put my uh, finger and thumb on the top of that, twist, overlap, and then you can kind of get some speed going, pulling your tape at the same time. You've got the skills. I've done a few hundred, <laughs> thousands of these. Yeah. Uh, when I get to the bottom, I'm just going to, with my thumb, uh, nail, pull off that tape. I'll use my snippers and just... Um, cut off the wire and just give it a little pinch. So here we've made our false stem oh. for our succulents. Uh, so we can put this within our centerpiece mm -hmm. and it's not gonna be drying up water like our cut flowers uh -huh. and greens will. For our next succulent that I wanna go ahead and show you then, Laura, how to create um, a false stem is our um, Crassula perforata string of buttons. Since we've kind of determined that this stem is really thin, we're not going to be able to pierce it, it will just kind of fall apart. Mm -hmm. We're still going to use our 20 gauge 18 inch wire, but I'm going to put it into like a U shape. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is creating a support system for the back of this stem. And so I'm actually putting it behind the stem and that's what I'm going to be taping with the uh, floral oh, stem tape. Interesting, okay. So again, I'm going to be kind of twisting 
pulling my tape at the same time because that's kind of what gets it sticky and awesome. overlapping on itself. When I find I've got a little bit of room with my left hand that I can get onto the top here, I'm going to be twirling it, pulling my tape, and then twisting Perfect. all the way down the stem. When we get to the bottom, we just rip off the uh, tape with our snippers, make a nice clean edge. Perfect. And then just go ahead and uh, firm that up so it sticks onto itself. I also like to use a floral food. Uh, there is a commercial floral food and this is readily available at Amazon.com okay. and so forth. And it has three ingredients in it. Uh, one is an acidifier, uh, one is an energy source, and one is an antibacterial. We've got our water, we have our floral food in here, mm -hmm. flowers are conditioned, succulents have all been wired and taped. If we started putting greenery in, and that's always what I start with first, and that kind of gives me the shape of the um, arrangement, sure. it'll kind of flop around a little bit and everything kind of like a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna use to kind of hold everything in place? And what I like to use is curly willow branches. These are nice and fresh, mm -hmm. so they're very pliable. You want to have them trimmed up, and that's where your pruners come in handy. Anything that looks really thick, that doesn't look um, like it's going to be able to bend and want to just pop out of the container, just go ahead and cut those. Okay. Once I use these and have them in the water, they'll start developing little leaves on them, and they're oh, really yeah. cute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if they're really long and so forth, um, you can have it where they come out of the face oh, that and pretty? that's okay. It adds an element of texture. I'm kind of going back and separating it a little bit because this is kind of our grid, let's okay. say, that's gonna keep our flowers where we want them to be and our greens and so forth. So uh -huh. what we're going to do, and it's on your bucket or in your bucket there, Laura, is the eucalyptus branches that we're going to I'm use going to first. This. So if I was to place this, it'll be something like this. Very nice. So I kind of hold it um, above my container first before I cut. Okay. And then I always go back, cut at an angle, fresh cut when I'm ready to go into the water. And then just go ahead and immerse that and off to the side. So what we're going to do is a triangle. So we kind of want to mimic what we have here on this side. Okay, so okay. they're going to be kind of kitty corner from each other. Perfect. Again, you don't want any plant material that's going oh. to be immersed in the water. I did on that so one. So that's All okay, right. just pull it out. Got it. And then, since things aesthetically look better in threes, we're going to be coming out in a triangular form, but then we have our third. Okay. Okay, so this one will be, again, kind of between both of these lengths okay. and just one of them. So it's really um, delicate looking. Okay. Whoops. And then I have a little bit of a leaf underneath my water. So I'm pulling it up, but it's still, the end is immersed in the water. So I don't have to recut it. So another um, type of greenery that I chose, just to kind of give it a little bulk. I really love the um, uh, wispy look of the eucalyptus, but I wanted to add, um, again, some bulk to it. And what we're going to do is just mimic the shape that I already have there as far as where our eucalyptus is placed. Okay. I want to go maybe just about, because I don't want to cover the whole thing up, so if we go halfway, okay. so you can kind of play with it and just see how the natural um, bend is to the branch, and then give it a nice, um, 45 degree angle cut with your pruners, and then just overlap a little bit. So something like this. Again, using your curly willow as your armature to keep things in place. And then we're just going to go ahead and repeat that uh, throughout the arrangement. And sometimes things might kind of have a bit of a different bend to it that maybe you don't want. So I kind of, again, always play with it above or around the base before I would actually cut it off. Okay. So the next design element we're going to do is our focal point. And so uh, being into succulents, I'm going to make the succulent um, the focal point here. So we're going to choose our large one here. And I want to place it where it's kind of going towards the center of the arrangement as far as the stem goes, okay. but the rosette itself is going to sit on the lip of our vase. Oh. So I'll try to do this without getting 
anything floating on the bottom of the container <laughs> with the other greens and so forth. And we're kind of working back ways uh, it's hard, at isn't this it? point. <laughs> um, but being a centerpiece, we really want everything to look pretty all the way around. Mm -hmm. We have one large Echeveria here, but we have one that's similar in color, not the same one. And that's going to be going um, right next to it. It also looks nice when you do your arrangements where some are kind of receding a little bit and mm. some are coming forward, so it adds a little bit of dimension to okay. it. We're going to kind of work again in that, keeping that triangular fashion in mind, but let's say I want to have something that's going more towards center here, a little bit long, mm -hmm. but I'm going to cut it with my pruners. But again, we're not worrying about this being in the water at all. I'm just wanting to kind of camouflage uh, the stem a little bit by putting that towards the center of the arrangement. It's kind of covered by uh, the stems of our greens, right. our curly willow, and so forth. But again, being a centerpiece in the middle of a table, we want it to look well from all sides. But we do want to focus on a focal point. I'm kind of adding to what I have there. I like to kind of angle things a little bit so the viewer who is actually sitting at the table is going to see the center of the rosette. We always want to hide our mechanics when you're doing a floral um, arrangement so we will be hiding this tape and so forth uh, with our other beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff here. So our next step is now that we have our form established, we have our focal point established, which we're going to tweak a little bit, let's start getting in some of the pretties then mm -hmm. too. So we're going to start with our Elstermeria here. I'm going to follow the same form, okay? okay. So our form has yeah. basically been established by our greenery mm -hmm. and we're going to start adding some bulk to it a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of laying the flower on top to get basically how long I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, cut at a 45 degree angle, putting that through the curly willow, willow armature into the water. A little more. And then just kind of resting on top of the greenery. We'll continue with our Alstermeria removing some of these um, leaves that are a little distracting from the flowers themselves. Okay. And another design element is rhythm. So we kind of want to not have everything in a straight line because mm -hmm. nothing in nature grows in a straight line. So why design that way unless you're doing something in a geometric form and it's intentional. Okay. So you want it to flow within the arrangement. And I'm going to go ahead and place this one kind of right in the center here. I might play with my height a little bit then too. I think we're still within that 12 to 15 uh, inch range. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I've kind of got things moving around a little bit here. Mm -hmm. You do too, looks good. Okay. Our succulents have kind of shifted around a little bit, but that's okay, we'll go back and we'll um, fix that later. All right, so now that we have our Elster Mary in, let's go ahead and use our roses. And what I did was I chose some spray roses in which the colors will coordinate with our um, Elster Mary and so forth, as well as with the um, succulents. Um, it's kind of the same thing as far as positioning and so forth, okay. but we're going to put them in a way where they're not our primary focus. Um, I know the succulents were, but even within the arrangement, so they're kind of like a secondary flower. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. Okay. I'm going to remove some of the leaves on him, on the stem. They're relatively weak. It doesn't really add anything. All right, so I'm making my 45 degree angle, and I'm kind of using my lilies as a little bit of a guide, but I'm going to be tucking these in a little bit, making sure that I have them uh, in the water source and just kind of accentuating mm. uh, the lilies. Beautiful. So we'll kind of follow that same pattern okay. uh, throughout the arrangement. So we have some nice movement. Um, again, it really doesn't shout front, back, side, because mm -hmm. being a centerpiece, we want it to look uh, good from all angles. Um, and we do have our focal point with the succulents, which some of them on my arrangement have kind of sunk in a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of pull that out a little bit so they don't get lost in there and we'll be adding a little bit more of our plant material that might help. Um, I think what we're going to do next is add maybe a secondary filler flower with our white wax flower. Okay. So these are nice and long so it would really accent our lines that we've created Oops. here. 
Again, we want to trim anything that would be below the water line. And okay. acts as a little bit of a filler. We kind of want to have these tucked in a little bit since okay. they're kind of um, narrow on top with a, like a little pom-pom cluster of uh, petals. And you can kind of play with it a little bit. Um, move around your greenery, kind of lace it between maybe some of your um, flowers. Uh, Kind of want the flowers to stand out more than um, greens. You can think of the greens as kind of the background as the support system. Mm -hmm. Our next um, component is Dusty Miller. I, I just thought. really like this soft silvery gray look to it. Now you can kind of see the one that I chose has got some issues with the leaves so uh -huh. I'm just going to snip that off. It's got a broken branch. It's got some debris on it. Oh that is that's like it. It right just there. kind of yeah. really um, closes the deal. It really does. <laughs> My goodness. It's amazing how one element, you bring it in and it just kind of completes it. It kind of makes it. everything yes. pop. It's a nice little um, like background filler yeah. to it, but especially with pastels, I think it just really adds to it. Uh, you can even take some of these individual leaves as well oh, and right. put them in. You don't have to put it in as a large uh, clump anywhere. So we've completed our centerpieces. Um, as you can see, we had to kind of fiddle, fiddle a little bit with the succulents because mm -hmm. they tend to kind of get um, dropped down a little bit. They are a little bit top heavy, but a really kind of a thin stem. So they mm -hmm. were getting pushed down very easily to pull out. Again, those don't need to be uh, in the water. Um, how to care for it. No direct sun. Okay. And not um, below like a heater vent or an air conditioning oh. vent. Mm -hmm. um, it'll dry out the flowers. Um, indoors, the succulents will do well for a couple of weeks. Maybe the etch of areas, if they aren't getting enough light, they'll start to elongate from the center. You'll notice oh. that the rosette shape uh, will be diminishing. You can't mm -hmm. revert that when you do put it in brighter light. Oh. But the kind of light that we have here today is perfect. Um, they should do well for um, quite some time. And again, the succulents will develop roots within a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, use them in other centerpieces with cut flowers, or you can plant them in well-draining um, soil in garden or in a container. Wonderful. I think that they turned out so pretty and I learned so many different things about design principles and about how to make succulents, you know, be able to fit into an arrangement like this and I think it's just amazing. Thank Great. you so much, oh, you're Cindy. Very welcome. Very oh. welcome. All right guys, that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time. Remember to check out Cindy's website, thesucculentperch.com, and her Facebook page, uh, The Succulent Perch. And of course, all the links will be down below. And I also want to thank Altman Plants for supplying us with such gorgeous succulents for this project. Make sure to check out their brand new website, altmanplants.com, and their Facebook page. And I'll leave their links down below as well. Thank you, Cindy, so much. Oh, pleasure, Laura. And fun. thank you, everyone, so much for watching. See you later.